Meet Wei Yi, number 8 chess player in the world. He has become the youngest ever chess player to reach the rating of 2600, and then the youngest ever to reach the rating of 2700, breaking Magnus Carlsen's record. But in 2018, having reached top 20 in the world, he suddenly disappeared. He went to study at a university and for several years played almost no chess. But this year he has returned with a blast, winning the super prestigious Tata Steel tournament showing other incredible results and breaking it into top 8 in the world. In this episode, we discuss Wei's chess journey, his ambitions and his secrets. We also discuss his friend Dean Liren. Wei has shared an exclusive story about why Dean didn't play Gukesh in the Chess Olympia and also what Dean should do to win the World Championship match. Do not miss the chess game at the end of the podcast. Enjoy! Hey guys, today I'm glad to present to you Wei Yi, the next guest of my podcast. Uh, hi, Wei. Hello, everyone. I'm Wei Yi. Welcome to the show. I'm thrilled to discuss with you the, the chess journey of yours and also some of the chess news and uh, events uh, that, discussed, that are discussed in the chess world. So first of all, I want you to speak about uh, uh, how you got into chess because uh, I've done some research and I know that in China, Chess is not uh, not the most popular board game. I know that there is uh, there is Chinese chess that is more popular than the so called international chess, uh, uh, and uh, yes. there is also Go, right? right? So th there are there are mm, many yeah, other yeah. games. Why why did you why did you choose chess? When I was five years old, and uh, I went to the kindergarten, uh, in one of the kindergarten in my hometown. And then a local club, a local chess club, they just uh, read a chess lesson in my classroom. Yes, and that's the first time I I knew chess. It, then I suddenly I like the different pieces and uh, the different uh, way they, they can move after the teacher's introduction. In holiday, my parents just bring me to the chess club. And uh, then I started to learn chess uh, when I was about five years old. Mm -hmm. Were you already familiar at that time with uh, Chinese chess, with uh, Sansi? You mean before this? or Yeah, before this. So be, I'm interested if, uh, <laughs> if there is some correlation. No, I, I did not uh, know about Chinese Shanxi or Go before I first time I know chess. But then, of course, uh, when I was growing up, and I I know that Chinese Shanxi and Go are more popular in China uh, than chess. Why do you think it is so? I think because Shanxi is a uh, one kind of uh, also we uh, also Go. They are traditional. I mean, traditional game of China because it uh, in before many many years, and, uh, some people just. Uh, played uh, Shanxi and Go. But uh, chess is not uh, a big game from China. I, th I think that's why Shanxi and Go uh, are more popular in China. I was very yeah. fascinated when I found out that uh, there is uh, this separate type of chess called Shanxi. And uh, I, I'm learning Chinese and my Chinese tutor, who is a uh, Chinese, um, uh, he taught me yeah. the Chinese chess and uh, I played it and I was surprised that there are very many similarities. I think that uh, uh, good chess players should probably be quite good at uh, Shanxi as well. Do you agree? Not really, because <laughs> um, I, I learned uh, some, uh, learned a little of, for Go when I was, was in university, but uh, I can't play it. <laughs> Very well. Yeah, I think there's there are some difference between chess and go. Something about calculation, the way to calculation. I think uh, what difference different. And then also uh, some rules and uh, strategies are different. But maybe for Shanxi is is uh, uh, better because 
there are some same scenes between Shang-Chi and the chess. For example, the rook in Shang-Chi mm -hmm. is uh, yeah, just the same like uh, chess. Yeah, and there is also a, a knight, Ma, so yeah, <laughs> similar. Yeah. A bishop also. Sim very <laughs> so, similar. Similar, yes. similar. Uh, I, are you good? Are you good at Chinese chess? No, no. I, I can only do uh, very little. I can play, but uh, very weak. I, I, I was interested. Maybe, maybe you are also very, very strong in that one. Okay. And Go, obviously, yes. Go is very, very much different from chess. Uh, but you chose international chess yeah. and you achieved, uh, you achieved uh, t uh, tremendous successes with that. You became the youngest ever person at that time to cross 2600 rating. Then you became the youngest ever to cross 2700. Uh, surpassing the record of Magnus Carlsen. How intense was your chess training? I, I guess you must have worked very hard to do all this when you were young. How much did you train? Tell me about your training routine when you were like 10 years old and training to, to grow, to, to, to grow as fast as possible. I, think I always trained about, uh, maybe seven to eight hours per day in when I was very, very young and uh, most of my dream is about uh, opening opening training yeah i read some some opening books and uh, analyze the lies yes i think the big difference between uh, between when i was 10 years old and now is uh, i did not feel very tired even even i trained about uh, for example eight hours and then I continue to to learn a lot, a lot of chess openings and uh, maybe some famous games of the world champions. I think that's that's very really important because when you was was when you were young, you have more power to to learn about chess. But you're still uh, very young. <laughs> you already feel that you you get tired more easily, right? <laughs> Not really, because uh, when I saw Pagukesh, for example, Pagukesh, Pratnan, and Ajun, Abdul Satrov, they they are quite young. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I I understand. So uh, you yeah. uh, you said that you spent uh, a lot of time. Analyzing openings, analyzing games by famous players of the past. Who's your favorite, by the way? Who's your favorite chess player of the past? When I was very young, for example, uh, seven years old, I, of course, I liked uh, Gary Kasparov's game very much. I grew up and uh, then I saw uh, Magnus Carlsen's games and I also, I like it. I like them <laughs> very much. It's uh, hard to say who is my a favorite uh, player, but I think I like uh, both of them. Mm -hmm. yes. What about what about chess players from China? Have you been inspired by any of them? Because Wang Yue was my, I mean, idol maybe, because uh, before uh, for fourteen years and uh, he uh, crossed the, the twenty seven hundred. He the first. Chinese player to be in 2700. Yeah, of course. Uh, the first super GM from China. Uh, yeah. But you also were, were the first ever Chinese player to, to achieve many, many impressive results. I wonder, um, uh, you also, uh, you also said that, uh, you used to do a lot of opening work and now probably you continue still doing so. What about uh, other parts of the chess improvement? How much do you work on? tactics on uh, studying end games stuff like that can you dig deeper into that yes i think uh, when i was very young i did a lot uh, exercise uh, i mean for tactics and maybe puzzles uh, then i became uh, bigger and uh, i did not train for the tactics very very much i think then i felt maybe opening and the end game was more uh, important. Uh, for example, you train for end game. It, it sometimes it looks very uh, boring uh, yeah, because you have to sit and think for a long time. 
about one a position. Yes, but maybe for opening training, it's uh, more interesting because you always you can always find uh, amazing moves and uh, great tactics when you check the opening lines. Yes, so for me, that's why I. I trained a lot uh, in opening, but uh, maybe not too much in uh, end game. But also for me, I like uh, many end games in some famous games. Uh, for example, Pramunic and uh, even Carson and even Wang Yue from China. They played uh, many great uh, end game. They showed great end game technique. Can you please give one example, maybe for our audience, of some uh, instructive uh, end game and uh, great end game technique? Some exact game. We will we will insert yeah. here in, in graphics this game, the position. Carson's game against uh, uh, Matlakov. It's a uh, queen queen and uh, rook pawn end game. We will insert it here uh, on, on, on the screen. Uh, did Magnus win that? Yeah, he won that. Of game. course. <laughs> I think it played in uh, it played in Grand Suisse. Okay, I found it. Okay, great. I I didn't uh, I didn't uh, see that that game before, so I will study it as well. Thank you for for the recommendation. I think it should be it should be an uh, a draw, right? With 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 best play. When they reached the queen and the rook pawn end game, it's winning for white. Then Magnus showed great end game technique, and in that game easily with no, without any. Sink. Ah, so it's a win in a, a position. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. I will need to brush up, brush up on my uh, Queen and games. I wanted to speak more about you as well, uh, because you have a very uh, fascinating story. You reached uh, amazing heights. Uh, you were in all headlines in uh, chess. Everybody was uh, talking about Wei Yi, the new prodigy, very strong. Will he be a new world chess champion? And then you. Uh, practically disappeared, uh, except uh, for for several years. You many people did not know what 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 you are doing. I, I I heard that you were studying. Can you tell me more about this? And uh, if you if you did some chess work during that time uh, when you were not very active, I reached uh, twenty seven hundred when I was uh, uh, about uh, fifteen, about sixteen years old. But then. Uh, I remember I lost uh, many elo points after I played a Qatar Open and uh, Aeroflot Open in 2016. And but then uh, I did not give up and try to uh, keep playing good, 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 play good chess. And then uh, I reached uh, 27 and uh, 2750. Yes, but then in 2018, I decided to go uh, go to study in university. Uh, maybe that's the a very important decision I made after I went to university. I can't I can't work very very hard on chess because I have to uh, also study a lot of lessons. It's not a bad decision for my life, but maybe. Uh, it, uh, I mean, maybe it's uh, not good decision for my just career. I learned a lot in university, but uh, I did not play too too much, too many uh, tournaments after I went to university. This is life. You want to get something, but you you have to give up something. Yeah. Uh, so you had to 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 give up something to to get into the university. Uh, can you please? Uh, uh, yeah. explain more about this, uh, the motivation uh, behind this decision, because many chess players, they decide not to go to university these days at all, because uh, they want to concentrate, to focus on chess, to make it their only priority to achieve some great results. Yeah. Were you thinking of uh, this, or mm, uh, what was your what, what 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 were your arguments for and against this decision? Uh, because in China, many professional chess players just uh, yes, they they went to university, but not really really be there. I mean, they still uh, work hard on chess. But for me, I think I want to do something uh, different than yeah, and uh, 
but also I think in China, uh, some uh, some players they can play good chess, and by the same time they they did very well in a university. For example, uh, Hou Yifan and uh, mm-hmm. Ran Lufei, t- teammate yeah, in mm-hmm. uh, national team, mm-hmm. but also I think you cannot do very well when you are studying in university and uh, by the same time you can you know, play uh, very uh, good chess because you need to uh, train in for a long time and uh, play many uh, tournaments. Of course, of course. What did you study at university? Yeah. What was your major? Economic uh, management, I think. Mm-hmm. Did you have any particular job in mind that you wanted to do uh, after graduating? Or do you just wanted to get this uh, degree to have like a backup plan, uh, unless you decide to pursue chess as a professional? When I had to make a decision, uh, I went to the university or not. Uh, my parents uh, wanted me to go. Yes, I think my coach also as uh, also. Uh, advised me to, to, to go to the university. But for me, it's not a very clear decision for me because for me, I love chess. I want to play chess. We, uh, I want to focus on, be focused on chess. But uh, on the other hand, I, I want to learn to not only uh, chess because I think, mm-hmm. yeah, maybe chess is chess, but not all of my life. Yeah, it's a great, great point uh, that you said that life, life does not only limit yeah. itself to chess. My, 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 my question was, uh, why did you yeah. choose uh, economics and management? Uh, did you have like uh, uh, plans to, to, to go to, to do some business or to work in some company? No, no, no. That's not, uh, not the reason I choose. The... No. So just, you, you just chose this. Okay. Uh, but now you're back to yeah. chess, right? You are, you are focused fully on chess. Yeah. You don't have any job uh, outside of a professional chess player, correct? Uh, yes, you're right. And now I have more time uh, to work on chess and uh, to play uh, any good, uh, good tournaments. Yes. And you've been doing tremendously well. You have been uh, you have won uh, a lot of tournaments. You have done great recently. You, your team has won a team tournament. Um, uh, congrats uh, uh, to you and your team members. But uh, besides that, you've you've won a lot of uh, top top tournaments, or you won a lot of prize uh, prizes in them, and you are now in top ten worldwide. How do you feel about that? And um, uh, what's your current ambition goal in chess? For me, I feel uh, quite I mean, difficult to play in high-level tournaments because before uh, we can say this year, I uh, honest, say honestly, I did not uh, play too much uh, high-level tournaments. So when I played in we can say, I I felt quite uh, uh, nervous because it's uh, it was really a long tournament and my opponents were very strong they they worked uh, very hard on chess but for me because i was in university when i before i play uh, we can say and uh, yes but luckily i i won the champion in the end but for me i, I feel very uh, difficult to play high level chess tournaments so after uh, i graduated from university i realized i i had to work much hard, harder than before to keep uh, good form to play the tournaments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but me, you did uh, you did incredibly well in the Wake and Z. But I think uh, if we want to be a, a top player of the world, you have to uh, keep in best form for many, many tournaments, not only, for example, one or two, but maybe the whole year you you should uh, try to be the great one to fight sure. for every tournament, but it's it's quite not easy. Yeah, of course. And what are your uh, goals for upcoming years in chess? Do you have like a goal of becoming a world chess champion or something of that kind? Uh, I think the only goal is to reach the world candidate after, yeah, 
I just want to reach the, the next work candidate, but I think it's quite uh, challenging and uh, not easy. But uh, I think that's my goal anyway. Mm -hmm. And long term, do you have uh, do you have a goal of uh, being the the second world chess champion from China? No, uh, I can't think about it because it's it's really a long way be between me and the uh, world champion. Okay, so you want to approach it step by step. First, you need to get into the candidates. That's logical. Yeah. Uh, Even this uh, is not the, the of course, of course. What what is uh, yeah. uh, what's your plan uh, regarding uh, the candidates? Uh, what do you think is the most uh, likely scenario where you can get into the candidates? Do you think the FIDE circuit or the Grand Swiss, the World Cup? What what are the mm, the paths that are most probable for you? Think there there are four ways for me. Uh, to to reach candidates, for example, the yeah, as you said, uh, FI, FIDE, Kirkut, and uh, Grand Swiss and uh, World Cup, and uh, maybe by rating. But I mean, all of them not so very easy because you had you have to uh, play very good to win the Grand Swiss or a World Cup. You need a lot of energy to play. Uh, many tournaments and uh, to uh, improve your FIDE uh, curriculum. But, and also uh, you have to uh, keep in good form to increase your rating uh, to, to be a candidate. But all no, those paths no are difficult. It's easy. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. But uh... But I'm sure that uh, none of what you've already achieved has been easy. So <laughs> it's uh, it's 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 all logical. I want to speak about uh, the chess events currently uh, and the upcoming yeah. match between your friend and uh, colleague uh, from the Chinese uh, national team, Din Li Ren and Gu Yeah, you have obviously. Uh, You have known Dean for a long time. You've played together in several Olympiads already yeah. and uh, in, in many tournaments. Uh, you've also known Gukesh for some time. You've played him recently in the Chess Olympiad. Uh, obviously, that was the, yeah. uh, the game that did not go your way. Uh, so you probably have uh, have some ideas who who is the, the favorite in this match. What are your predictions? The prediction for me is quite difficult because uh, Dean Li Ren is my a teammate and uh, a friend for many years, but it looks like uh, he w was not in a uh, best form in uh, this year's tournaments. For example, Norway Chess Olympiad. Yeah, you, but uh, okay. Of course, we we saw uh, he was trying to be better and better. It's It's really not easy for him to uh, recover a very fast his best, but uh, yes, he's trying. But not easy, but Gukesh, his opponent, I think, uh, grew very fast. I mean, played much better than previous years, and uh, yes, we can uh, see his fantastic performance in uh, Olympiad. Yes, I think uh, Gukesh had has better chance if uh, things just to go like this as friend and teammates in a national team. Of course, uh, I I think maybe it's better if if Tim Lira wins. But uh, as a chess a player, chess fans, maybe uh, Gukesh had a better chance. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to say, yeah. yeah obviously, you are rooting yes. for Dean, your your friend, of course. Um, I wanted to ask yeah. because everybody everybody is wondering. Maybe you can you can shed light on this issue. Why was it you who played uh, Gukesh in the Olympiad? Why did uh, did Dean decide not to play, or did the team captain tell him not to play in that game? What happened? Everybody was so surprised. Why is he not playing? For us, also, uh, we were surprised because 
uh, Dean Liren lost his last game uh, before the, he before we meet uh, India mm-hmm. in Chess Olympiad because uh, he uh, he lost to uh, Lee Kuan Lian and yeah. uh, he felt very very bad uh, when we had a meeting in uh, the evening and he said I felt very, very bad after the day's loss so I I think I have to rest one day yes so mm-hmm. sorry yes but we say we really need you you yes maybe you should uh, uh, have good sleep first and uh, tomorrow you can make the a better decision maybe okay but uh, you know uh, the chess player you lost again and uh, you need really uh, time to to recover so finally he made the decision he he will not play so we said okay okay i went to the first board and uh, lost lost to question we just uh, missed the uh, chance to to fight for the champion yeah that was uh, that was a pivotal moment in that olympiad of course so it was Ding's decision. He 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 decided not to play. Yeah, maybe maybe he was not in 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 in, uh, in the situation where he he would have played good chess. I, who knows what would have hap- happened? Yeah. But 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you thank you for for sh- for sharing the details. So um, uh, what do you think about Gukesh? You you've played him recently. What do you think about his style? About his strengths weaknesses, if he has any. His play is like a machine. I mean, uh, for me, if I made a, a terrible move, but not not that very bad, but maybe not accurate accurate move. After I made this move, I I realized I I should make a better move. Then I will, I mean, I will be upset. Then maybe mm-hmm. my my moves will be uh, bad and bad. But uh, it's like a, a emotion. But for for him, I think. If he can keep try, trying to make best moves because he, he, he was always very calm down. That's why he's very strong. Mm-hmm. So not only but, does he play very yeah. strong moves, like uh, almost like a computer, but also he is very calm and doesn't uh, get uh, yes. uh, overwhelmed by emotions. Yeah, that sounds very strong. Yes. <laughs> does he have any weaknesses? What yeah. do you think about that? He has not many weaknesses, but... Uh, Maybe we can so we can see his game against Giri Anish in uh, Wakanze, and uh, mm-hmm. because in that game he was in uh, they reached uh, uh, end game, which Anish is is better, but uh, Black is able to to hold. But then uh, Gukesh played maybe some some inaccurate moves, and uh, finally he lost that game. Yes, so maybe. Uh, when he uh, was in uh, worse end again or worse some maybe some uh, quiet positions he was worse he then maybe he played uh, his play was not very accurate mm-hmm. yes, but i think uh, after uh, october maybe i think he 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 will do much better than before because he is he is still uh, growing very fast improve very fast. Why do you think he doesn't do uh, as uh, impressively in Rapid and Blitz if compared to Classical? Many guests of my podcast have said that they are yeah. surprised that he's not as good in Rapid and Blitz uh, compared to his Classical skill. W- what's the reason? What do you think? Uh, he did not play very uh, many, many uh, Rapid and or Blitz tournaments, but uh, I remember in Poland he played not good. Yeah, but maybe because after his uh, after World Candidates he felt very uh, tired, so maybe that's why he played uh, his play was not good. Uh, but also I think in Rapid and Blitz uh, there are there, there are something uh, different between uh, classical chess and uh, repeat or bleed bleed chess. You have to, uh, for example, for me, uh, in uh, classical chess, I I like to think maybe a move 
for example, uh, are wasting uh, maybe 30 minutes for, for a move. But in a repeat, you have to uh, make a move quickly. And in please also you have uh, no time to, to, to think. You have to, you always have to uh, make a decision very fast. Yes, I think you, you have to uh, handle the reason, biggest difference between classical chess and repeat or blitz. Okay, yes. but you are very strong in rapid and blitz. And uh, yeah, you've demonstrated that uh, on many occasions. So you can handle this. Um, but maybe maybe Gukesh will, will show this as well when he plays more tournaments in rapid and blitz. What about, uh, you, 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 you uh, spoke in some lengths about Gukesh's strengths and weaknesses. What about Dean? What will it take for Dean Lejeune to be able to take down Gukesh D in that match? What, what do you think uh, should he do? Uh, yeah. what, because yes, he is as a underdog, but there are, I think, uh, Yeah. probabilities, possibilities for him to win. What, what should he do to this? Maybe he should uh, work, her, work harder on chess. So he should take more time to, to work on chess. And uh, maybe he need more uh, energy because uh, we, as we saw in uh, Chess Olympia, uh, in the first part of the game, he always played great chess. I mean, for example, his game... Uh, against Abdul Satarov and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Masudalo. Yes, uh, he played good in the uh, opening and the, the middle, middle game. And then he he got a uh, winning position in both of these two games. But then he missed the, the great chances to, to win. And then the game ended as draw. So maybe he need to need he need more energy to keep his perf performance. I mean, in one game because there were, there are not only uh, opening and mid game but also end game. He always played a great end game. He always showed great uh, end game technique where he is uh, top player of the world. So I think he need to. He need more energy. Yeah, let's let's hope that Dean finds a way to to boost his energy level to make this match uh, more interesting for all spectators yeah. and all the chess world because I think this is in the interest of everyone. Last question. Uh, currently, uh, yeah. many top players mm, are very vocal about the fact that chess is getting. Classical chess is getting more and more about preparation, about memorization of opening lines. And uh, this is why many top chess players, including many of uh, those who were, who were already guests of my podcast, uh, keep saying that Fisher Random, Chess 960, Freestyle Chess, whatever you call it, that this is the future of chess, that uh, everybody will play Fisher Random, in classical and uh, the usual standard chess will be res reserved for only blitz and rapid. Do you agree? And do you like Fisher Random? For me, it's, uh, of course, I think, uh, because I uh, did not play any uh, Fisher chess tournaments, but I'm very interested in uh, Fisher Random chess. But I don't think the classical chess will be will be less important than than before because it's really the uh, most traditional way you can show your a technique, your strategy. Of course, repeat chess and the blitz chess uh, are being more important for these years. But uh, I mean, classical chess still has his. Uh, it's uh, still has its. I mean importance. Okay, we will see. We will see. Some some players say that it will be replaced. Others say that it's it needs to stay. We need this traditional format of chess. I really like it. Uh, so I, I wouldn't mind. So we will see. We will see. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, yeah. uh, we have a tradition on this podcast. I play uh, Blitz against my 
uh, guests. Obviously, I am not not as strong. I am much, much lower rated than you. So if you are okay with it, I would ask for some time odds if it's if it's fine with you. I think uh, I can. I want to try if uh, one minute is possible. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I'm sure you will have enough time. Okay, guys. For some reason, we could not find the the option on chess.com to to play to play a game with star mods to to add time. There used to be a button. Chess.com team, please please help us with that next time. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go. We we'll, no we will play without the increment uh, without the without the the time mods this time. So probably there is a high chance that. I will get crushed very fast, but we will see. Okay. The French defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, attack is coming. <laughs> it's very dangerous. Oops. It's coming already. <laughs> it's not easy to defend from this, of course. Maybe already I'm lost <laughs> after H5. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Looks dangerous. Fair enough. Very dangerous. <laughs> I mixed up my opening, I think. Um, do I have anything here? Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe this, but F6, knight takes H7, I thought is is very bad, but but this is also <laughs> this is also horrible. Yeah. I'm not surviving this maybe one. It's, yeah. Maybe it's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> this one is even worse. <laughs> okay. In 16 moves, I, I get yeah. a completely losing position. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't even know where it went wrong after H4 already. It's, it's very unpleasant. Okay. I resign. <laughs> Way E, ladies and gentlemen. This, this, this was, uh, this was an unstoppable mate for everyone interested. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I couldn't do anything. Where did this, where, where do you think I went wrong? I think that PD7 was the mistake. Yeah. I think maybe, uh, not, not C6 was much better because the after not C6, yeah. you, you always have the threat of d4. Yes. Mm. Yeah, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe. But but yeah, it turns out after h4, f5 is holding. But but yeah, it's already not pleasant at all. Yeah, thank you for this uh, instructive yeah. game. And yeah, guys, this is how dangerous uh, way e is. Uh, <laughs> you have you have been uh, shown uh, the true powers of an attacking chess player. Okay, thanks again, uh, Wei. It's been a fascinating discussion. Uh, good luck with your quest uh, uh, in chess. I wish you to get into the candidates. Thank and, you. And uh, everyone, don't forget to comment, subscribe, hit the like button, and stay tuned for next guests. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.